if you're interested in taking Java 2, that's uh, it's going to be covered in, entirely in Chapter 2, I mean Java 2, where you learn to program uh, the same things that you do in here in class, they all be on the uh, GUI interface. Okay? It's going to be all what's called an e event-driven application because now, like if you ever use uh, Visual Basic, that is an event program, driven program, because it waits for the user to do something, right? Uh, it's kind of like in you write your um, console application for that voting program. Same thing. It's almost like an event. It's going to mimic that same situation. It's waiting for a, a, a user input or something. So Java has like it gone. It went through like three different um, you know makeovers pretty much. So we have the abstract Windows Toolkit or AWT. This way back in the early 90s. We have you know Java applets in the way back at that time. So um, because of huge, you know, uh, explosion of the internet, basically, and they built that to kind of accommodate the web. Okay, so they did that in the early days, and it was pretty exciting at the time. But it became obsolete because it did not uh, handle um, all the things that they wanted to do for the web. It's not very flexible, and so they upgraded that to a new version called Swing. And then um, that's what you kind of like what you're using in the uh, examples in the book when you built those little, uh, you know, JPANG and JFRANG, things like that, JOption pane. That's using the Java, uh, the Swing class, which is Swing uh, framework here, uh, libraries. And then they came with a newer one called Java FX. If you ever heard about that, this is the latest version in Java that uses all this cool interface. Now, Java FX is so much more powerful because um, the I guess the, the main difference between these these are basically the layout, the design layout, um, where the old way here, you have to like, I, and I'll show you some examples down here, but the layout is, it's almost like, um, it, it forces your system to match the layout, the design. And that's really hard because like Windows has its own uh, GUI interface, um, Mac has its own, and so on. So it's really hard to do that. But with the Java effects, then this one here is kind of very really dynamic. It changes to whatever OS it runs on. Okay. <clears throat> so again, just information here. Um, you you will see that it uses uh, this quarter system. It's kind of similar to game, and we see on the web also. But you have different layout here. So if you see this Windows 10 and Windows 7, it's really different. The buttons are completely different, the layout's different, so it's not very universal across um, all those, right? So the idea is to have the same layout, the same button, regardless of browsers or regardless of systems, and that's what um, JavaFX does. Okay, so um, different classes here, and again just show you the two different ones. So now you can see, look at Mac, and the windows, the button looks very identical, right? Because the swing class makes it so that button looks the same, even though on different systems. But the old way, uh, it will conform to the local system, so it was not ideal. So here's a, a huge example of that, right? So the old window, AWT uh, component versus the new one. <clears throat> and then when you build it, you have all these different layouts. We call these like the um, Layout manager here, the border, flow, flow layout, grid. Um, this is also the same for JavaFX. So here you have an example of the border layout. You have a pane for the top, bottom. It's like a website, basically. You have the um, you know, header, footer, and then right and left uh, navigation in the center of your main application, right? So you can build that. I put your buttons in here, put your data in here, and those locations. You can nest these together in each other as well. Um, here's another one here for the flow, <clears throat> and then uh, the grid will be like three by five or three by two, whatever that is. And you just choose that position, right? Zero, zero will be here, zero, one will be here, and so on. You can pick and choose locations. You can combine some panels together. This will be the one panel, the one on the left, one panel, and so on. Okay, and you can build menus, right? Drop the menus wherever you. And they, here you have a component that has a nested, um, you know, components and set other components as well. So it's very, very handy. 
And actually, it's quite fun when you get into uh, developing these type of um, uh, programs. Um, and I'm just going to show you a really simple application in here. And again, you already did some of those, but just a long tiny example. And what I do right in here is the same program. <clears throat> I have an error. What's the error? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go in here. Um, and this is going to agree. Let's try a new class. New class. Let's go to GUI examples. And the main. <clears throat> Right, so you could have like um, a, um, a a a a uh, let's see a flow pain. Uh, let's let's use the flow. Uh, I guess flow flow layout. And let's call this is the layout. The new flow. <clears throat> and these are just classes you can import into your program. Okay, so here I have a class a layout for the flow. So flow just means when you put objects on your page, it flows along the line, just like a web page, right? I can add a label there, add a button, add another text field, and it will flow through that page. Okay, so you have so you have a, a flow layout, <clears throat> and then you can have um, so a J frame, right? <clears throat> you can just call that frame or something J frame. This is the main frame. And again, you want to import from the swing. <clears throat> and so the frame is the window, right? It's, it's that when you run it, it gives you the window. Okay. And I can say, okay, I want the frame <clears throat> to have a uh, certain size. So frame dot um, size. Well, actually, set set uh, size. Okay, give you, give you a dimension here. You can use a dimension object for just the height and the width. That's fine, right? Um, you can do that. So the width will be a number. So I usually usually go up here. You say int. Um, can be like final int. Width would be, let's like just say, 300, 300. These are all in pixels. And then final, and the height will be, let's just say, 300 by 300, right? So here you just put W, H. Okay? <clears throat> and frame dot set visible, I just put true. So, as you can see, when, when I run this, I mean, for now, it's just an empty frame, empty window, right? So that frame is just, it's just a window. And if you run it, you'll see that it's right on the top left here. This is a 300 by 300 uh, pane, a frame. You can resize it because we set to resizable. You can turn that off so it's not resizable, right? You can also set the different layout. Here you have the normal, the traditional uh, minimizer, maximizer, and the close button here. You can change that to something else if you want. But the location is always in the top left because that's the zero zero position. And then go positive x and positive y, right? And like a, a, a game uh, corner system. If you want to start, you want to move that to a location, let's say in the center or somewhere over here when you run the program. Then yeah, you can go back here and say, I want the uh, frame dot set position. Uh, I mean, set x, I think. Uh, location, yeah, set location here. Okay, again, X and Y coordinate system. So I want to move maybe like 500 pixel to the right, and then maybe I don't know 200 pixels down. Okay, and then when you again when you run this, you see that it's no longer on the top top left anymore. It starts right here in the system somewhere. And this is a um, based on the size of the computer screen, right? So whatever the size is. 
it's um, <clears throat> sorry, the location is proportional to your screen size. Okay. If you want to center every time, then you will measure the center, the, the width of your screen, half that, right, divided by half, and then the height and divided by half, and then that corner will be right in the center here. So it will start in center. Okay. So let me just have some little math to play with there. <clears throat> so that is the, the frame. And then if you want to add text to it, then we have things like uh, J text field, um, J label, right? Text field will be like an input box. You can yeah, allow people to enter names and so on. So you can have like, a, again, you can see that I kind of put this in out of order. Almost like it doesn't matter. But usually you put all these above here. I mean, just again, convention. So you can have like J label. <clears throat> I'll call this LBL um, message. And I'll say I say the message would be uh, new J label. You put a message here. Hello. Okay. Oops. And then just import the label class from the Swing library. <clears throat> so the label is created. Okay, so if you run it, you'll see that it's not, it shouldn't be there because we didn't add it to the frame. You, once you create a component, uh, you have to add it to the frame. So how do you add that to the frame? Well, it's easy. You just go frame that add. I'm adding, I'm adding um, <coughs> the label message. Okay, you add that to the frame in order, right? So add the label first, either the top left. And then you add another one be next to that, and then keep going until it reaches the end of that um, the screen, and then it will wraps back to the next line, and so on. Okay, I think that's how it is, right? So you add that to the frame, and then if you play it now, you'll see that there it is, right? It's it's, a, it's very tiny. Or well, in this case, I think this is a default frame, so I guess it's always going to be centered there. And you can move this around. You can say because the label is its own uh, object, right? You can move this up and down, and you can say, "Oh, I want the label to be in a different position." So you can say, uh, "Label message that again, right? Say location x and y again, and you can just say 200 uh, down uh, forward, and then maybe um, 100 or something." <coughs> Well, it doesn't show much there, but you kind of want to add it to the to the flow first. I didn't add the flow to it. Okay, so <clears throat> like that. That's that's a label. You can do a a text as well or J button, and then BTN OK, right? Uh, a new button. I'll show you a new button. New J button. And then again, just import that from the swing class. And after that, you're going to add the button to the frame as well. And you see that they might overlap because it's, it's, it's the button here. Because when I didn't put into the layout. It's in the frame only, so it's, it actually overrides the other one. But this is a button, it's a huge button. It makes a whole frame of button. Yeah, it makes a whole frame of button. And you don't want that, right? You put it on the layout. <laughs> you must want this button, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so then, okay, you don't want that, so you can say, okay, I want to put that into a layout. So this is a layout we created here, it's called the frame uh, flow layout. So to add that, you can say here, Frame dot set layout, and here is the layout manager, and we just created one called layout up here. So that could be your default layout. You use the frame now. Okay, so the frame layout is the default we just created up here, and you have the uh, you know the border, the the, uh, the uh, grid, and other layouts as well. <clears throat> so as you play it, it's much better, right? It's really small, but um, at least. It's not the whole frame anymore. The button's right here. 
And if it's small, you can change the font size, change the font color, font type, um, <clears throat> and, and so forth. So the button, it's, it's empty. There's no message there. Okay. Uh, so once you, cr once you create this, again, it's just a class, right? The class here, if you um, go here and do a control space, it tells you all these constructors. I use the empty one. I could have one has an action, one has an icon. You can put an icon there if you want. Again, just have to kind of go into the icon class and see what that is, or a text and icon together and so forth. So once you do that and they say, oh, I forgot to add a text to it, you can always go to btnok dot set text, right? <clears throat> and it's a function built into the button class. And most of the button, I think most of the components have the set text built in there anyway. So I can say, oh, this is the OK button. And then you can try it again. So here it says OK now. Okay. <clears throat> so just make sure that when you do this, though, every time you run, you're going to have a lot of these. You see this little Java icon down here. I mean, each window has its own component here. So if you do a lot, it's going to consume a lot of your memories. Okay. It doesn't mean that it's closed. You can, once you close it, let's you just make sure you close all of them because this is will still be running from the previous version. And if you have a new version, you fix it, you run again, then that new version is um, effective, but the old one it will still run. So just delete those. If you see all these, all these Java uh, symbols down there. <clears throat> yeah, I just want to show you a little bit about this one here. And when you can, do, um, we don't have going to, in Java 2, we'll go into much deeper than this. Um, you have text input, you can read data from the console there, also from that window. Um, we'll also touch databases, you can connect directly to a database uh, file or server, and you add data to that uh, GUI interface. So you can have a drop down menu, read data from a table, and, and, so, and so on. So actually part of the project for Java 2 is that I actually had them uh, redo this voting application using the GUI interface. You know, so, and you have like four options. So you, you can use this as the swing class, but in the other, uh, in Java 2, you will use Java FX, which is very similar, but it's much more powerful. Or you can use uh, JSP, which is like website, use the web browser interface, it's all built in Java. Uh, or you can use JSF. Okay, JSF is um, a, a very powerful uh, MVC uh, application for building websites as well. Or you use something called Servlet. Okay, it's another web base and, and so on. So uh, last but not least, um, let's see here. And here, if you ever get a chance to, go into my link here and I have my latest version <coughs> Uh, this one here is only for um, uh, lynda.com. This is for like AngularJS and jQuery stuff. I also have um, the one for JSF. So this one here builds uh, applications for web at the same time by using JSF, which is Java based. And, you know, I kind of did a little application where it allows you to like. Um, Connect with a database on the back end, um, you build a full uh, CRUD operation where you edit, delete, and log in. And